Ubuntu has been around for a very, very long time. As of next year, we'll be celebrating the 20th anniversary of the first full release, 4.10 Warty Warthog. And like any other project out there, it doesn't matter what space it's in, it is going to have its fair share of controversies. And Ubuntu is definitely not safe from this. But this one isn't a recent controversy. This one goes all the way back to the start of the project. And I don't mean the first full release. I mean when we were still dealing with the release candidates for Warty Warthog. Where Mark Shuttleworth, in his infinite wisdom, decided to include some, let's just say, artwork in some of these pre-release versions of Ubuntu. So this right here is one of the pre-release login screens. You may remember the login screen where it was just the Ubuntu logo. This is another variant of it. This is weird, but mostly fine. I don't know why the dude isn't wearing a shirt. I don't know why the girl on the bottom isn't wearing a shirt. It's weird as a login screen, but, you know, circle of friends, all that fun stuff. This I've extra censored just to deal with the YouTube overlords, nothing was actually being shown, but this was the Ubuntu splash screen for GNOME. This is odd, right? Like, this seems weird as a default for a system, a system that's probably going to get used in education and a business context. Where it became a serious community problem is with the October calendar image. This got a lot of attention from the community and not because everybody liked it. Now, the splash screen was short-lived, so most people just didn't see it, and most people didn't care about the Circle of Friends image. But when it came to the October calendar image, the reason everybody cared is if you were upgrading through the release candidates and you didn't have a custom wallpaper set, due to a bug, this became your wallpaper. If you just installed this version, you wouldn't see it, but for those people who are really dedicated to the project, which, considering the distro wasn't officially out yet, was pretty much everyone, a lot of people saw it. With Mark Shuttleworth saying on the mailing list, one thing that needs to be clear is the calendar image is not the default desktop. It worked out that way unexpectedly for those of you who had installed a previous release and then upgraded. My sincere apologies if that caught anyone off guard, especially if it came at an awkward moment. You know, you upgraded your work system and then nude people. For new users, the default desktop is the image with the Ubuntu logo on it, and that's what eventually made it into the full Ubuntu Warty Warthog release. Now, this context was not here initially. This was added a couple of days later. Initially, everyone just assumed this was going to be the default theme, and this led to, you know, some feedback. If you search for things like erotic wallpaper, this is probably one of the shorter threads default theme. There is going to be a lot about default theme and also community response of new Ubuntu artwork. A lot of people had a lot of things to say. Now, there are hundreds of comments here and I highly encourage you to go and read them because some of them are genuinely hilarious, like this one from Josiah who are uh, completely ignored the controversy itself, and then said they really like the muddy brown theme of Warty Warthog. Finally, a default theme which doesn't assault my eyes with MS Blue, Apple shiny colours, or candy apple green. Human is pleasant to the eyes. Human is pleasant to the eyes. And the only gripe that I have is the GTK colorations are still blue based. I don't know how anyone actually likes the theme, but ignoring that. The general arguments were as such. These images are completely unsuitable as a default in a business context to show to children without some sort of parental warning, and in more conservative countries such as Islamic countries, but plenty of others out there as well. And if you want worldwide adoption, you should provide a more innocuous theme that isn't intentionally trying to grab attention. But on the flip side, in Western countries, it wouldn't be weird to see something like this on a billboard going through a shopping mall. It's 
pretty normal in this context. But it also hurts the credibility of Ubuntu as a brand. It seems like a very teenagery kind of wallpaper. Anyone being serious and, you know, making a serious system isn't just going to have a bunch of naked people on their desktop. But also, you can't appease everybody in every culture, so just keep it around and those people just don't have to use it. During this period, it also developed some um, fun nicknames, like the Porn Distribution and Linux with three X's. You know, fun names that I'm sure they want attached to their new brand. Now, due to this topic basically taking over the mailing list just before the first major release, something had to be done and something had to be said. You cannot release the distro in this state. So eventually, we got to that comment from Mark Shuttleworth we briefly looked at before. Let's look at some of the rest of it. The background to the theme is the idea of a spirit of humanity. Most people think of computers as machinery, but today they are far more a tool of sharing and communication. My computer is how I keep in touch with my family and friends, as much as the place I do my work. It's not a cold plastic thing, it's my connection to the world of the people I care about. We were looking for visual ways to communicate that and realised there was no way to do it without showing people, diverse people, of different shapes and sizes, being people. Our logo emphasises the idea of people of different ethnic backgrounds working and playing together, so we tried to work that into it. Now visually, it's very hard to put people into computer art. You should see some of the early mock-ups. I really wish I could see those. Sadly, I don't believe they were ever made public. Nonetheless, we pursued this idea with professional artists and designers, and the images you see today are the first in a series that attempt to encapsulate the theme of warmth, humanness, diversity, sharing, caring, and nature. Now, while I could very easily say this is nonsense, this is coping, and he's just trying to make the drama go away, I don't think that was the case. I feel like this was his genuine thoughts and his genuine opinion on the matter. He really thought that this was going to be a good idea for Ubuntu. I do think he was misguided in that thought, but that's a whole separate matter. Even though he does go on to say, I'm aware the images might be controversial, so is any work of art. This forum is where that controversy can be explored and where we can ultimately take a view on whether this theme is something that should stay part of Ubuntu in future releases. Now, following all this, an Ubuntu community meeting was held on Monday the 18th of October, and this meeting does have a transcript available on the Wayback Machine. If you want to go read the entire thing, once again, I highly recommend you do so, but it is very, very long, so it's probably going to take quite a bit of time. Luckily, though, there is this. There is a summary written by Benjamin Mako, Marco, Benjamin Hill of Canonical. The first concern was over default versus available artwork. The general consensus was that defaults should be conservative, unoffensive and uncontroversial. There were some disagreements on if that meant they needed to be plain. I don't know why anyone would think they need to be plain. Some people felt very strongly that the images should be attractive and non-plain. I think this is a pretty standard opinion, but also non-controversial. You know, have a fancy looking Ubuntu logo, do what they do nowadays with the interpretation of the animal it's based on and things like that. Don't just have a plain color, that's boring. Now, as for the specific artwork in question, People felt the artwork was particularly ill-suited to the corporate environment and in certain cultures where mainstream culture has a more conservative approach and attitudes towards sexuality and nudity than in the West. Mark Shuttleworth explained that he was personally not interested in targeting the business market at the moment, but that it was nice to have. How many developers do you know that have an Ubuntu system, an Ubuntu virtual machine, WSL using Ubuntu? That is such a weird statement knowing the context today, but I guess it made sense for the time. At the time, Ubuntu literally hadn't even had its first full release yet. 
Few, if any people, argued the artwork should be removed altogether. Nobody voiced a strong objection to the artwork being included as an option, but didn't like the idea of having it be people's first impression with the distribution, which I think is totally fair. And next we move on to inclusions or depictions of people altogether. Most people were fine with it, assuming those people had conservative dress. The problem is whose definition are you working with? Are we talking about a Western American definition? Are we going with a more are we going with a more conservative Islamic definition? All of this seems like way too much effort, so it's probably better just to not do it by default. As for these particular images though, you know, having nudity as the fault probably shouldn't be there, so it's probably better just to have it on the CD and then let the user decide to use it if they want to use it. But what about derivatives? Should there be a rule that say a derivative from the Netherlands has to be acceptable in Iran? Most people just said no, and that's a matter for that specific derivative. Now, as for the GNOME splash screen, this one was a bit more of a problem, because for the user to change this, it wasn't as simple as just changing a wallpaper, and some people described it as the worst of all the controversial images. Most people, once again, were fine with it being included as an option if you really want it to be there, but it definitely shouldn't be the default. If someone wants to use it, go ahead and use it. And pretty much the same was said about the login screen as well. And the final thing it moved to is something that wasn't really brought up on the mailing list, the screensavers. This is something that came up on a bunch of other distros as well. Here is a forum post over on the Fedora project, and here is one over on Gentoo. Potentially objectionable X screensaver module in GL Snake. Serious question about censorship and Gentoo. So GL Snake at the time had an option called Flaccid Penis, where it would just draw a dick. <laughs> well, where it would just draw one on your screen as a screensaver. And it had a bunch of other similar options as well. You know, you can probably guess what the opposite of the flaccid variety is. Um, why was it added? I don't know. But it was added fairly secretly between updates. There wasn't anything in the patch notes or anything like that. And a lot of people got very confused. And most people weren't really that concerned by it, but considering that Red Hat was already removing it, it just made sense to remove it as well. There was also a screensaver of a bouncing cow, and some people in India found that offensive, and some people were also bothered by a screensaver showing the chemical molecule for certain hallucinogenic substances. But regardless, it was a much smaller problem than the inclusion of the earlier artwork. Now, following this, a bunch of changes were made, and these are the changes you saw on the full release of 4.10. So the GNOME splash screen will revert to a fairly simple one with the Ubuntu logo. The Circle of Friends login screen will be available as an option, but otherwise, it's just, you know, no special imagery. The default desktop will remain the Ubuntu desktop. The calendar will not be installed by default, but is available as a separate package. And if you do use the calendar, it will require network access to update that wallpaper month to month, because that was not the only picture they had. Now, you should be seeing a couple on your screen right now. Some of them have been lost to time, but these are the ones I know exist. And from my understanding, these remained available as a package at least until Ubuntu 8.04. It's really hard to find some of the stuff from back then. A lot of the stuff just hasn't really been archived. Now to end it off, Mark also said this. In the pantheon of ideas about which it could be asked, which dumb nut dreamed this up? The idea of strong human imagery in Ubuntu would appear to feature prominently and the dumb nut in question would be me. I'll have to shoulder any blame for the original idea and its execution, so please direct any feedback at me rather than other Ubuntu developers, and thanks to all of you who helped to straighten me out. That feels a little bit sarcastic, maybe not, but I can't imagine that after all that work and all that money that was spent, uh, he was very happy about not having it be available as a default. Either way though, 
it wasn't there as a default and you could have used it if you go back and use those early versions of Ubuntu or you know, go and download the wallpaper now and go and use it. So I know a lot of you have been using Linux for a really, really long time, but how many of you actually use Warty Warthog when it was currently being supported? I don't mean going back years later and then using it. I mean using it when it was the current thing. I would love to know, and I would love to know if you got involved in any of these discussions or had any thoughts in it at the time, and uh, yeah, let me know down below. So if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And sometimes it's good to listen to your community. Most of the time though, you know. <laughs>